Hello everyone and uh, I hope you're all well and, and that you're staying safe in these troubled times. Um, thank you for tuning in and taking your time to watch and listen to what I have to say. Uh, hopefully it does help you a little bit. Um, today we will s I will speak about, I will continue uh, in the series of uh, on the Mother of God in, in the writings of the Church Fathers. Um, and, and today I will turn to a saint which uh, is actually, I, I would probably say, my favorite saint of the early church, or one of my favorite saints of the early church, if I'm allowed to choose a favorite. And and the, the, the saint in question, the father in question, is Saint Ephraim the Syrian. And before I jump in um, for a brief analysis of his view on the Mother of God, I thought just briefly to mention who he was, because unfortunately, most people in the West, and what I mean by West, I mean everything west of of of, of, of turkey basically uh, have very little knowledge of, of saint ephraim and especially lay people uh, there's very little um, about him available and 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 i just think that he, he many might know his name but not know who he was or what what made him so remarkable and what made him remarkable was that he 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 was a poet he was a deacon and a poet and he lived in the fourth century he was born at the beginning of the fourth century when i say that he was a poet I, I truly mean that he was a poet he he wrote all his theological ideas in the form of poems which are very beautiful especially in the syriac language <clears throat> which sadly i do not know and i think most of us do not know however there are beautiful translations by uh, dr sebastian brock a renowned scholar in in the field of saint ephraim and the syriac language and I truly encourage every one of you to to go and find his his poems. They're usually free online. You can you can just Google Saint Ephraim the Syrian poems. You could also buy them as books. For example, you could buy this spiritual psalter <clears throat> uh, by Ephraim the Syrian, which is uh, combined or created by by Saint Theophan the Recluse. So we have a bunch of poems here written in in a prayerful form. And so before I start to speak about it, I truly want to encourage you all to go out there and, and learn more about this saint, about his writings, uh, because uh, he is very special. And, and I would love for more people uh, in the West, in the Orthodox Church, among Catholics, to simply know him even better than they already do. So as I mentioned before today, I will speak about St. Ephraim's views on the Mother of God. Previously, we spoke about St. Irenaeus of Lyons. Today, we are continuing chronologically, this is a century later, with St. Ephraim. The harp of the Holy Spirit, uh, that, that is what St. Ephraim is actually usually called, uh, which again emphasizes how beautifully he, he's able to express himself in his poems. In the Roman Catholic Church, he is actually referred to as the Marian Doctor, in, uh, implying that his he has a special and deep devotion to the Mother of God. Uh, he is also a doctor of the Church in the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and what sets Saint Ephraim apart from someone like Saint Irenaeus, who we who we explored earlier or in the previous ep episode, uh, is that, like I mentioned before, he expresses his theology regarding the Mother of God in poetry, in poetry dedicated to the Mother of God and to God and Christ Himself. And the sheer beauty of these poems uh, truly demonstrate to us the profound devotion and love that Saint Ephraim had for the Mother of God. However, these poems are not merely expressions of love. Um, they are also deep theological statements uh, that truly bring Saint Ephraim in line with the other fathers, and especially the previously mentioned Saint Irenaeus. And, and it firmly places Saint Ephraim in the patristic tradition. And so the first, we could say, uh, idea he has about the Mother of God is that she is the highest being in creation. And so after God, after Christ, the God-man himself, Saint Ephraim actually sees the Mother of God as the highest and most wonderful creature, meaning created. He wrote in a poem, and I'm quoting here, only you and your mother are more beautiful than everything. For on you, O Lord, there is no mark, neither is there any stain in your mother." End quote. 
Here is not just an expression of affection, uh, it is equally a theological statement, underlining that while Jesus was free from sin, and so was also his mother through her choice to submit her own will to the divine will of God. Another example that is packed with theological doctrines while still being a poem is when the saint, Saint Ephraim, presents how a reality of one event must presuppose the reality of another one. In this case, Christ's birth pointing to his death and resurrection being real. Quote, His death on the cross attests to his birth of a woman, for anyone that dies must be born as well. If, any deni if anyone denies his birth, the cross proves him wrong. End quote. Here is a clear example uh, of the instance that Christ's human birth is vital is a, is a vital prerequisite of his crucifixion which led of course to his death and later resurrection in glory this is an answer to some during his time who questions who questioned the reality of Christ's humanity they would they would question if Christ truly became human or if he remained only god and saint e and saint Ephraim is very clear you cannot believe in the crucifixion and at the same time reject the birth from a woman and this makes the role of the mother of god vital for salvation itself saint Ephraim would would say and and that's what he writes she's vital for salvation itself the next theme in saint Ephraim about the mother of god is is her virginity that i want to that i want to discuss very briefly and so saint Ephraim he, he saw the old testament prophecies and the various symbols in the old testament as clear signs that the savior of mankind must be born of a virgin so, as we mentioned in the episode of about Saint Irenaeus, the, the uh, Eve, the first woman, she was a virgin, and so the virginity of Eve, uh, the unconsumed burning bush, the prophecies, and more in the Old Testament, all point to a virgin birth of Christ. So Jesus's resurrection from the tomb, the saints saw as the last confirmation, so to speak, of the virgin birth, as he writes in one of his nativity hymns which I will put up here for, so for you to follow along, because it's quite long. Quote, By your resurrection, you convinced them about your birth, for the den was sealed and the grave was secure, the pure one on the den and the living one in the grave. Your, witness, your witnesses were the sealed den and the grave. The womb and the shale, meaning Hades, shouted with joy and cried out about your resurrection. The womb that was sealed conceived you. Shale that was secured brought you forth. Against nature the womb conceived and shale yielded. Sealed was the grave which they entrusted with keeping the dead man. Virginal was the womb that knew no man. The virginal womb and the sealed grave like trumpets for a deaf people shouted in its ears. End quote. So we see that St. Ephraim deeply celebrated the virginity of the Mother of God, just as St. Irenaeus did. He saw it as a prerogative and a privilege of the Mother of God, and as something vital for salvation itself, as fo foretold in the Old Testament. He wrote, Observe the angel who comes and deposits the seed in Mary's ear. Hence, the Mother of God was made fertile, by the word of God itself, which entered her ear when pronounced by the, by the angel Gabriel, making the Theotokos blessed among women, as we read in Luke, showing us how the first mother, Eve, was cursed, while the second mother, the Theotokos, the mother of God, was blessed. And the third theme I want to very briefly touch upon in St. Ephraim's poetry is that one that um, St. Irenaeus speaks of as well, which is the mother of God is the new Eve or the second Eve, the triumph of good over evil and light over dark darkness, this is how St. Ephraim viewed the Mother of God. He saw her as the one that conquers the serpent. He further developed the comparison between the Mother of God and Eve, the notion of new or second Eve. Quote, Mary gave birth without having relations with a man. As in the beginning, Eve was born from Adam without a coroner relationship. So it happened for Joseph and Mary, his wife. Eve brought to the world the murdering Cain. Mary brought forth the life giver. One brought into the world him who spilled the blood of his brother. The other, him whose blood was poured out for the sake of his brothers. 
One brought into the world him who fled, trembling because of the curse of the earth. The other brought forth him who, having taken the curse upon himself, nailed it to the cross. End quote. And so we see here that the, the parallel between Christ as the new Adam and the mother of God as the new Eve are obvious. And they further take the Pauline doctrine and develop it fully. Uh, the Theotokos, the mother of God for St. Ephraim, was the crown of creation, the most marvelous of God's creatures. His deep devotion and love toward her even further shows us how this veneration of the mother of God is based in the earliest church and has its roots in the apostles and in scripture itself. St. Saint, Saint Ephraim seems to recognize that while speaking about Christ, it is impossible not to mention his mother, the mother of God. And same as St. Irenaeus, and maybe even more so, he puts the Theotokos, the mother of God, not only as part of the salvation plan, but as its key right after Christ himself. And there you have it, brothers and sisters, a very brief um, examination of some of the ideas and views that St. Ephraim had about the Mother of God, about the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Theotokos. And again, I want to really encourage, encourage all of you to, to go out there and, and just Google some of his poems and get to know him. Uh, his writings are deeply symbolic, deeply spiritual, and I really believe that especially this book if you can't find anything online try to get this book you can you can buy it online it, it's truly uh, short prayers that they are very profound and deep and um, i truly hope that this little short lecture uh, or, or talk about saint Ephraim will inspire you to go out and and examine this this harp of the holy spirit and as he's called and um, Thank you all for, for, for coming and listening, coming digitally and paying attention. And, and I hope uh, to see you soon again. God bless you all and stay safe.